Hello, my name is Kain Tsang Munonye. I'm the application developer and in this presentation we are going to be talking about expert systems. Well, the world is moving in the direction of technology and expert systems is a topic everybody needs to understand. I'm going to, I'm going to be very very clear in this presentation and so let's get started by looking at the various topics we are going to discuss. First, we are going to give a formal definition of an expert system and try to make uh, some explanation and then I explain the advantages of expert systems and then we also discuss uh, some of the existing expert systems that has been developed then we discuss how expert systems work, the components of expert systems the characteristics of expert systems uh, maybe the disadvantages or the challenges of expert systems and uh, there are some other subtopics I did not list here but just follow along and I'm sure you catch up everything in this presentation so what is an expert system? now take note of these two definitions here the first one says it is an intelligent computer program take note is a computer program that uses knowledge and inference to solve problems that are difficult enough to require significant human expertise for their solution. Now Professor E. O. Majuko and the University of Protocol here in Nigeria gave this definition. I had a student uh, ask a question, say are robots expert systems or the assembly line for automobiles are they expert systems? Well the professor asked the student what is an expert system the student replied it is a computer program so expert system is not the hardware but the computer program that makes it work okay so the next ingredient in the definition says it uses knowledge and inference now in an expert system there, are, there must be two ingredients two components the knowledge that is the knowledge base and then the inference engine okay take note of the nice part of the definition it solves problems but not just any kind of problem problems that are difficult enough to require significant human expertise so it's not just simple problems and then you say you are using a spa system the problem will be difficult enough to require human expert so an expert system is a clone okay, of a human expert a computer version of the human expert now take note of another definition an expert system is a computer program it tallies with the definition given by the professor here that represents and reasons with knowledge of some specialist subject with a view to solving problems or giving advice all the same the the main point is is a computer program it solves problems it uses knowledge okay let's proceed what are the advantages uh, maybe uh, you pause the video and take note of the seven advantages I have highlighted here but I want you to pay close attention to this one says um, yeah number one they are infinitely reproducible. A human expert cannot duplicate himself into different locations, but an expert system can be replicated in different locations to handle as many users, as many problems as possible. This is not possible with humans, and that is why they are infinitely reproducible. That is one of the core advantages of expert systems. And let, let's look at number five. They, they do not discriminate. A human expert may be swayed by the person he sees, a relative, a non-relative, somebody from his race and so on, but an expert system does not discriminate. Number three, always available. Okay, so these seven points, try to understand them. These are what makes expert systems unique. And that is why we need expert systems in our modern world we have some expert systems I'd like you to just do a Google search of these three expert systems we have the Mycene that was developed sometime 
is a medic used in the medical field and helps uh, doctors to diagnose bacterial diseases. They will have prospectal helps uh, geologists to predict where mineral deposits may be found. They will have dendral uh, helps to to hypothesize on molecular structure of a compound. So this is just you take some time to go to Google and search and find what all this is all about. Let's proceed to the next slide. Now there are three components of the SPAT systems. The knowledge base, the inference engine and the user interface. But in this presentation we are going to focus on one, the knowledge base and the inference engine. The third one, the user interface, I'm not going to cover it here. But take note, the user interface is simply an interface between the, 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 the user, the human user and the computer in form of a screen, a display, input output device and what have you. So our presentation focuses on the knowledge base and, and inference engine. Some also add some other components like a database, but I think these three are the core components of the SPAT system. So, what is the knowledge base? It is a database, a repository of information and rules about certain subjects. So, we can look at the knowledge base as collection of objects and attributes. And what is an object defined by Professor E. O. Machuku is the conclusion defined by its associated rules. The attribute are characteristics of objects, specific qualities that with each rule help us to define an object. So we have some examples here of what objects might be and take note that the knowledge base is a, a collection of objects and the attributes. Let's take for instance dog. Dog has attributes like is a is a mammal, it lives on land, is domestic, is used as spade and it come back. So these attributes are mentioned here is not definitive. They they can be other attributes but sometimes in the knowledge base of course there must be a finite number of attributes that are assigned to a particular uh, object in the knowledge base. So Getting it clear, a knowledge base is a database, a collection of information of object and the attributes. Okay, so we have, uh, for instance, we have hippo. We have is a mammal. It lives in water. It's not domestic. It's not used as bait. It cannot back. Okay, that's the attribute for 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 uh, a hippo. Now the next. A uh, component of the inference engine is the of the null of the expert system is the inference engine. Now, what is the inference engine? The inference engine can be des des described as the processor of the expert system. It makes use of the information from the knowledge base to reach conclusion. Okay, now take note that there is uh, information in the knowledge base. There is also information that is gathered from the user, okay? So, getting this information from the, the user, the infer inference engine decide they are attempt to find object in the knowledge base that matches the information gathered from the user, okay? I think that's clear enough. So, we have two types of inference engine. One, the deterministic inference engine and the probabilistic inference engine. Uh, I explain this in the next slide. If an inference engine is deterministic, then there is element of certainty associated with it. What do we mean? It means that the decision reached by this inference engine is sure, is, is certain, uh, is guaranteed to be factual. Okay. For instance what is the result of an acid combined with a base? An acid combined with a base produces salt and water. There are no two ways about it. It's, it's the fact. It's a verified, well-known fact that does not change. Okay, So, 
if inference engine reaches this kind of decision from known facts that is certain has element of certainty then we say it is a deterministic inference engine then the next one is a probabilistic inference engine a, uh, uh, an inference engine is probabilistic when there is element of uncertainty associated with decisions reached by this inference engine for instance if there is a class of 70 students and the question is they are writing an exam or they are taking a test how many of these students will pass the exam the answer is not clear but but some uh, conclusion may be reached okay some inference can be made based on the perfor previous performance of the class some inference can be made or based on the the, the 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 difficulty of this exam of text an inference can be made say and maybe half of the student will pass maybe 70 percent but these decisions are not deterministic they are probabilistic meaning that they are based on probability and uh, and has element of uncertainty associated with them let's proceed we have the next nice topic we are going to discuss construction of an inference engine now there are three basic ways to construct an inference engine the first one is the forward chaining the second is the backward chaining and then we have the rule value or rule based inference engine what is the difference I think let's look at the difference we take the first one inference engine constructed by forward chaining remember we say that the knowledge base is a collection of objects and associated attributes and rules okay now the forward chaining inference engine starts with the attributes or the data and uses inference rules to get more data and reach a conclusion okay so the forward chaining inference engine starts with the data okay it gets more data and then based on this data it draws a conclusion for instance let's take for instance we have a it's a domestic animal yes does it live on land yes is it a mammal yes does it bark yes then it is a dog okay so the goal or the object you reach this conclusion at the later end after using the rules and that is what we have here we have the data is a mammal not dom uh, not domestic okay not used as a pet cannot bark and lives in water based on this data we draw a conclusion or make an inference the animal is a hippo because the data we have matches the characteristics or the attributes of a hippo so uh, the, the the forward chaining inference engine takes data okay and then makes inference to find an object it gets data and finds the object that matches the data now the the backward chaining inference engine is the opposite what the backward chaining inference engine does is it starts with the object it takes a blind guess okay oh is a dog is a dog is it a mammal yes does he live on land yes is it domestic yes is it used as a pet yes oh uh, yeah sure my guess is right it's a dog <laughs> so that is how the backward chaining works it makes a guess and starts getting the data to either confirm or deny so if we have this inference engine guessing at the initial time is a dog and then the data it gets says it lives in water what would be the inference the inference would be it is not a dog and then it starts all over or goes another direction so this is what I illustrate here we have the guess or the hypothesis says it is a dog then it gets data to either confirm or deny it. is it a mammal yes it lives on land or the user spy as a pet come back 
Tim Franks is, says it is surely a dog. So this is backward chaining. Now we have discussed forward chaining, we have discussed backward chaining. And now the next one we are going to discuss is the rule value. We are not going to spend much time here, but the rule value is improved backward chaining. What it means is it makes a hypothesis and then asks questions that leads it to its objective. Okay? So the data it gathers it, it gathers data that tends to confirm that the hypothesis is correct. Okay? So we have about two problems with it, difficult to implement. Uh, the knowledge base for this type uh, used to be very, very large. Then here, uh, the knowledge base needs to contain not only standard object attributes information, but also value quantifiers which make constructing the knowledge base more difficult. So, this is the rule value. Uh, just take note that there are three uh, inference engine methods, forward chaining, backward chaining and the rule value. So we have characteristics of expert systems. There are seven of them. I'm not going to explain everything but maybe you pause this video, take a pen and a paper, and write all these advantages or characteristics of the expert system and then you try to go through. So we have the decent user interface. It should be able to uh, have a friendly interface to communicate or interact with the user. Then it, ha it should have a workable inference engine. It should be implementable, not too complicated. It should be self-explanatory. An inference engine should give a feedback on how it reached a conclusion. It should be able to backtrack to tell the user how it reached a conclusion. And then uh, why it needs a particular piece of data and why it has not reached a particular conclusion uh, as the case may be. Then an SPAS system should handle difficult problems. It should perform well on difficult problems. User interaction should not be too complicated for a user to use. When it comes to interaction, it should do so in a pace that uh, humans can follow. Okay? Uh, maintenance and expansion. An ASPAS system should be upgradable, should be able, should be expandable, um, can be modified, can be scaled up, and so on. Alright, I hope you enjoyed my video on expert systems. If you find this video informative, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and once again, I'd like to thank you for viewing.